everyone, and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in these videos, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects, as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, Benoit, Helena, Marco, and I attended the Gamma Expo at the Peppermill Reno Resort in Reno, Nevada last week. While it encompassed a lot of work, it was a blast to get back in the saddle, as it were. We had a great time reconnecting with each other, as well as making some important connections for the company with various retailers and distributors, showing off our amazing products and getting to see how people reacted to our new retail product line. We were able to take advantage of some great networking opportunities and get some orders placed for several of our products. But now, we're all back home and back to our normal schedules. I'll be putting on my usual two videos this week on Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. PST, so be on the lookout for those. Just a couple smaller shipping announcements for everyone this week in the general news section. For Solomon Kane, our Rattapaks are being shipped now. The first ones to go out will be for those backers still missing theirs. After that, those who place their orders on our eShop will be getting theirs, so be on the lookout. For Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2, shipping is still underway, and most importantly, address verification started going out over the weekend for those of you in North America. Some of you who ordered the Feldherr bag will not be receiving it with the rest of your order, though. This is because the bags were not part of the pre-packaging done at the hub. The bags will be sent next, though, so hold on. Now, we do have some more info on our other products, so let's get to them. Some big news for Joan of Arc today. One of the more widely noticeable issues with the 1.5 printing were that some backers' towers from the Siege expansion were rather warped and didn't look very structurally sound. Since we had so many backers responding with the same issue, we went back to the factory to see what went wrong and found out that it was indeed a production line problem, and the factory agreed to correct the issue and send another batch for replacements. Quartermaster Logistics has now confirmed receiving those replacements and reports that it is ready to receive replacement requests for the towers and doors of the Siege expansion. So please contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net and we'll be happy to connect you with QML to get that ball rolling for you. Currently, this is only for our North America backers, though. Meeple Logistics, while they have also confirmed receipt of the replacement shipment for the EU and rest of the world regions, must finalize Solomon Kane errata and Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 fulfillment first before moving on to taking replacement requests for the doors and towers of the Seas expansion. Now, we will notify you of replacement requests being opened for those issues with Meeple Logistics as soon as we can. For Hell the Last Saga this week, we have this month's development snapshot, and as you can see, we are continuing to move forward in the finalization of the project. As you may remember from a recent update, we have decided to start a new and final batch of playtests and reviews that will help us to detect any, any elusive errors and make sure that the game is working properly. Among the last elements that deserve special attention are the punch boards. The game will have two types of punch boards. A basic punch board that will have to be completely unpunched at the opening of the box that contains all of the common materials for the core of the game. Threat tokens, teeth, yes, you heard that correctly, location tokens, which are basically points of interest that target areas for generic actions, saga tokens, bonus tokens, and cardboard labeled bases for the totems, since they are now plastic but will still require an A, B, C, or D delineation. And there will also be several punch boards for Saga exclusive tokens, of which dozens of tokens will have to remain attached until a paragraph invokes them. These numbered and coded tokens hold another part of the surprises that the game and some aspects of the hero's progression will have. We are also in the process of finalizing the composition of these save sheets and making sure the instructions and their iconography match. We finished all of the basic French documents and are in the process of finalizing the English documents. 
and we have requested additional translations to follow up on the last tests that are being proofread again. But apart from the final proofreading, the last elements missing from the puzzle are the punch boards mentioned above, some extra fluff on the experience cards, the illustrations for the last two songs, and the finishing of the rulebook layout. Now this last one is a monster and will also include a thematic lexicon of the Nordic mythology that is often mentioned in the narrative. Now we'll show that to you in a version that's been stripped of the additional rules that might spoil something for you. And yes, the rulebook will also have an index. Just a short update for Monpok this week to share a neat development. One of the central mechanisms of the Megaton Mashup Co-op Artificial Intelligence is the Gigaton Grind deck, which has been upgraded for use with three and now four player counts. We will be adding eight cards to this deck that will be dedicated to these player counts and mode. And we're going to be sending the final iterations of these cards to Privateer Press for approval this week. And as soon as we receive their approval, we'll be sharing some of them with you in a future update. So not a huge groundbreaking update, but definitely evidence of forward progress and something to look forward to in a future update. For Rise of the Necromancers this week, first off, we would like to kindly remind you to complete your pledge manager on our website. If you have questions on how to do so, our recent updates have contained a wealth of information on how to do that. Now, we know we're not updating you every week with new stuff, and this does not mean we aren't working on the game. We have multiple teams and multiple departments, and we wouldn't ask the layout people to do game design or the communications team to do layout. Usually, we share things about development, and simply there's very little development work to do on Rise of the Necrobanzers. Granted, we edited the rules and cards to give them a little bit of a polish, but actual gameplay changes are very few to none. Today, however, we want to give you some insight into localization, a necessary process. At Mythic Games, we have two working languages, French and English, as our team has both languages in abundance. In the case of Rise of the Necromancers, though, it was originally an English project, and all the source material is in English. What that means is that we need to translate it for French backers. All our games are heavily text-dependent, the exception being Six Siege, the board game, where only the rules and the operators are language pieces. So, how do we localize a game? We can make a written translation in any text editor and copy-paste it into the files, or we could change the files themselves. That was the old way people did this, actually, and many still use this method, or Excel spreadsheets. However, some projects are massive, needing a greater consistency or need to be changed midway to accommodate new design decisions. Sometimes, multiple translators tackle a project, even if we prefer one-person projects. The scope of certain projects and or their urgency simply demands it. To help us with those massive projects, we use computer-assisted translation tools, specifically software that helps us. Now, this does not mean we use Google Translate. Quite the contrary. We use professional translators, sometimes in-house and other times externally, to translate the projects. The computer-assisted translation software records our every translation choice, and we can even feed it a term base so that it suggests the right match every single time. For instance, if we have very consistent formulae like spell name is free to cast, every single instance of that syntax will be automatically completed if it 100% matches, or will be suggested if it matches to some degree the bit of text we're translating. What computer-assisted translation also allows is getting pre-laid out files so that the translators and or graphic designers don't have to go through thousands of copy-paste situations. It saves a huge chunk of time and decreases the amount of human manipulation required which can lead to more errors. Of course, the text length often varies when changing languages, and we must manually adjust layout for that. Now, about Rise of the Necromancers, we've started with the core box. 
Our translator will update the French files as those were made available during the campaign and translate all of the cards, player aids, and then we'll move to the expansions and then boxes. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you want to ask any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because you just never know what Leo's going to do. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my two videos on Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. PST, so be on the lookout for those. That's it, though, for this week. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. <music>